The GSOW Secret Cabal Interviews. <laughs>
wow, I don't know, months. It took a few months. It was very confusing at the beginning because it helps when you understand the code behind um, the Wikipedia. But obviously, I didn't know anything about that. But um, I think the way you trained was very helpful because you you've always said, you know, you have to sort of look at what the pa other pages look like and sort of take an example and follow the steps. And also you had quite a few very helpful videos on how to do certain things um, that, that you saved in forum. So, you know, it, it was very frustrating at times because just things didn't work or <laughs> whatever. And... Um, my first edit, because when you just join Wikipedia, like if you're not an experienced editor, all your edits are like deleted <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot. It's like, who is this person just editing stuff from the left, right, and center? But anyway, so some of my edits got got um, got deleted at the, at the beginning, and that was quite disheartening. But um, it didn't <laughs> stop me. <laughs> well, yeah, and we tell. And the funny part is, is what I'll say is, oh, I got deleted. Oh well, that's all right. <laughs> move on because it is it's it's a training exercise absolutely and actually um yeah i had experience with with the whole page the good good page good written page been deleted so that was a really good learning curve for me i think because if you don't try uh obviously you don't make mistakes and then you don't succeed but then if you come across a challenge like this and you give up well that's too bad life is like that so and all your edits, anything that you make that's also that has been deleted or anything like that, we can always pull it back up and we can, once you have yeah. more experience, that's the way I look at it. I say, okay, well, all right. So it didn't work out that moment, that time. Yeah. We'll, we'll just put it aside and we'll move on to something else and we'll, we'll make it, um, you know, we'll just pull it back out. But uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, once you, you have done something yourself and you've written the page and it's out there, it's such, such a satisfying thing, you know. So in order to finish your training, I give you a choice of, you know, five or six pages. And I ask you to pick one page to rewrite. Most of the time, they're people that you've never heard of. No. And you were assigned five or six pages and you picked one and you rewrote it. Which one was that? Yes, that was a page for a guy called Neil Gershenfeld. And he um, he's a pretty cool scientist guy who uh, works for Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, anyways, he is famous for Center for Bits and Atoms, and he's pretty cool. He's set up um, some labs all over the world in like poor countries, and he introduces science to poor kids who can't afford to go to universities or schools, and it's hands-on science. It, it's actually... He's turned out to be a pretty fantastic guy. Uh, his Wikipedia page was very poorly written, like there was literally one paragraph. Mm. There was no, apart from saying that he was part of this lab and in this university, there was nothing else about him whatsoever. But um, he's actually been on um, uh, Tam, and he met James Randin, the pictures and stuff. So it was like, he's part of us, basically. Uh, part of our team. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I remember um, seeing his lecture at Tam. In fact, yes, you there was that. a video, and I had seen the video more than once. I was so impressed. They set up these small labs in different countries for like five hundred dollars or something like that, and they teach children how to use hands-on science using recyclable things. And I, he works for MIT, is that right? Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, very interesting person. That's how he probably made the list. Is I, I remember him from him speaking at TAM. Yeah, the, uh, very interesting. Yes, two thousand four, yeah. two thousand no TAM four, I think. T uh, well, th this picture was from TAM five. TAM five. Yeah, you're right. I was very impressed with them. I don't know how I find these names to put them on the list. The list is quite long, by the way. But um, yeah. And then I go through and I pick something, maybe five, that I think will interest whoever I'm training. And you had never heard of him before, right? I haven't, no. Um, and I've actually been uh, listening to his uh, lectures on YouTube as I was rewriting his page, try to understand what he actually does. It was very quite inspirational, really. Uh, so anyway, I've um, rewrote his page, um, added some sources, and it looks much much better now, definitely. Respectable now, huh? <laughs> yeah, than it did before. If I may say so myself. Yeah, and that's what <laughs> what GSOW really part of what we're doing is we want to show that these people are respectable and that they because they represent us. Yeah, that's right, and um, it's quite often Wikipedia is the first 
source um, of information when people you know googling something and, and come across a person they don't know or want to find something out I sometimes find myself in the situations, you know, when you Google something and you come across the Wikipedia page, and it's just completely appalling. Yeah. <laughs> That's embarrassing. That's right. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah. It's a great, yeah, great thing that we, we can improve those. Now you left, you finished training, and then you had never been to a skeptic event, right? And in no, April, no, I said, I'm going to be at QED. <laughs> In Manchester, who else wants to go? Who's going to be there? And you were back and forth on it, I think? No, nah, there was no back and forth. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll be there. Like, absolutely, because um, I, I'm not, I don't live too far from Manchester. And um, I just, you know, I told my husband, uh, there's this thing happening in Manchester. We're not doing anything and we're going. And we just did. And it was absolutely amazing. Just such a great event. To get together, to meet new people. It was great to meet you, Susan, as well, and a few other um, Wikipedia editors. Mm -hmm. We had quite was, a few of us uh, there. What a treat, yeah, yeah. The, the team that we've got is all over the world. Australia, Mexico, America, England. It's great that we can connect on, on the internet, uh, online, Google Hangouts or Skype, but... Um, at the end of the day, when you meet face to face, there is nothing that can you know replace that kind of connection. So it was pretty awesome. And so from then on, we um we thought right, we're gonna we're gonna see what else is out there, and we're going to to uh, Apostacon second time in a row in September again. So that's gonna be great. And you just finished QED 2015, right? Yep. Which was amazing. It made me so mad looking at those pictures. Oh my gosh, I wanted to be there so bad. I had so much fun at QED. It was it was so really, awesome. really, really quality. Yeah. Major quality. Very fun. Lots of lots of things happening there. I mean, I'm I really am gonna have to go back. Even if they don't have me as a speaker, I've gotta go mm. back to QED. It was too much fun. I, I really had had hoped I'd go this year. But while we were at QED, you met someone that was a you were a big fan of. Oh gosh, yes. Um, I met I met uh, Nathan Phelps, who was one of the speakers there. He was absolutely. He actually made that conference. I when I uh, when I went this year, I said to brother, because without Nate, it wasn't the same because he was just such a great presence. Uh, he's one of the most generous, and just wonderful people. He's really, really great. And um, he had this closing speech, uh, and we got to hang out with him. Um, so, yeah, I found out that he's got a page. Oh, oh. Yes, he had a page, and we rewrote it right before. I'm sure it was improved, I was going to say, yeah. But it has never been translated into Russian yet, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which was a great excuse for me to, to get on it and, 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 and to do, uh, do a Russian page for him. Did this plan it together? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely ins inspired me. <laughs> One of the joys about this project is that uh, when I first started, I wasn't thinking, you know, about doing Wikipedia in other languages because, I mean, that's just nuts. I mean, it's crazy to try to run a group of people in English, let alone a group in other languages. So at first, I thought, okay, I'll just try to see if other people will do the same exact project in other languages. And then after a while, I said, I can do this. And so bringing in other languages is just, like I say, is nuts. I don't know of any other language, any other projects that are doing this. Certainly, it's difficult to do it on Wikipedia itself. The languages don't seem to talk to each other. No, they don't. Right. They just seem to be just, it's English only. And, and I, I, I think that in educating the world is far too important to just keep it to English. I just really bothers me when it's people are just very English centric and you're like, uh, there are other languages out there. We kind of need to, to do what we can. And so you translated it into Russian. Yeah. So we did that. And yeah, it's been, the feedback, the feedback is really great. And it's so great to see that the work we've done is well, good and appreciated. And, all that. So, um, and that was the first, I think my first big sort of, project that I did after uh, finishing my training. And for anybody who doesn't know, maybe we should tell them who Nathan Phelps is. For the two people out there okay. listening who don't know who he is. He he is the uh, son of a Westboro Baptist Church founder. 
he was he's a, a, a great LGBT community sort of um, uh, activist and he stands up well he stands up for human rights I'm assuming but well uh, it, it, human rights covers the whole whole thing doesn't it so um, he's a great human being he's got um, a, hopefully a movie coming out soon oh I hadn't heard that a movie really well I I, I was hoping that, yeah uh, sorry oh was it a book no, it was a movie. It was I'm sure it was a movie, and uh, he even set a, set up a page at some point. I I don't know where he got with it. I need to follow it up. He's a public speaker, and he goes around the country in America mostly, and he talks about his story and how he escaped this Westboro Baptist Church, which is a very fundamentally right Christian movement. He had a really abusive childhood and really tough. Sort of uh, young, well, uh, his his early life, and um, he came out of it being just a great person that overcame everything. And despite everything that happened to him, he just oh, he was so sweet. I met him at QED. I arrived there a day early, and he's one of the first people I met. I I my Mark Edward, myself, and my son got to the hotel and. And I said, is anybody else here of the speakers? And they said, Nathan Phelps is. And I said, oh, that'd be great. Um, love to meet him. They said, let's go. We're going to go out to dinner. We're going to go to this thing. And I'm like, okay. So we just walked to this venue that we went to a lecture. And he was so nice. And throughout the whole conference, he was able to meet anybody. Um, he was, you know, please talk to me. And he'd sit out in the the lobby and just people could approach him. Yeah, he, he was very approachable. He had time for everything. Yeah, and that was the beauty of uh, uh, conferences. As you said, you can sit at home and you can watch YouTube videos of these lectures, but to be able to go to a conference and, and sit down and actually speak to people is, I mean, not just the speakers, meeting anybody. I know I took a lot of pictures at QED and anybody could look at those. One man wrote to me and he said, thank you so much for taking a picture of me talking to Nathan Phelps out in, you know, the lobby. He says, he sat there with yeah. me for an hour or more and we just talked and talked and talked. And he says, I never thought to get a photo. And I just happened to see that you had just taken a snapshot and there was uh, Nathan and I talking. And he says, I, I took, I downloaded that. I cropped it. So it's just him and I, and I <laughs> printed it out and I'm so happy you took a photo of us together. He says, that was such a um, important part of his, uh, conference and I think most so I don't I don't know about many events because we've only been to a couple so far um, speakers do make themselves available they're, they're very approachable there is plenty like they stay up like some of them stay up until the morning <laughs> through the night you know after all the speeches are finished in the bar and they just talk talk to people who want to whatever you know just have discussions and stuff um, I know that's what I do <laughs> Yeah, I'll stay yeah, as no, long they... as anybody wants to talk to me. Let's just Absolutely. talk. That, that's that's it's my goal. <laughs> After Nathan, what did you do? I think it was one of my goals for a long time to do Seth Andrews Page, host of the Thinking Atheist the radio podcast. I've been following him for a while and been listening to his podcast. And um, yeah, I I just couldn't believe he hasn't got a page. Um, so I thought, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make one. I teamed up with a couple more people and and um, well, we we written a page which got published after being nominated for do you know which is like a front page of Wikipedia. It's been there, there has been an absolute enormous debate. I I don't know how many weeks it lasted. I'm sure it was probably about two months, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, from uh, beginning to the end and. After debating it backwards and forwards with other editors, it's been d deleted and sort of rejected, and for for various reasons. But um, we still uh, we've we've got the page, we've we've got the content of the page. We're just waiting for more sources to be added to it to be published back on Wikipedia, and that was the biggest probably learning curve for me in Wikipedia world. It's yeah, it's like anything else you know right so you, when you're creating a page from new from brand new which is something i don't like to have the editors do until you are you know a little bit farther along in your training well past your training because it's so yeah. hard you have to prove notoriety okay. 
And I mean, there's, there's rules in Wikipedia about what is, you know, accepted and what's not, but sort of, it's a little vague in places. And if somebody really pushes it, then you can kind of read the rules a different way. And Seth Andrews page was deleted for not being notable enough. I think that's kind of silly, but it is what it is. And I don't want any of my editors to get involved in edit wars because it can give you a bad name. And it's not that important. I mean, because like you say, we have the page, we can, it's, it's off of English Wikipedia. And as soon as we get a couple more sources that are really even stronger, then we can add them in and add the page up. And there it is again, it's done. And yeah. then it can't really be touched. So sometimes when they're the beginning of a page, it's like the first time it is a little, I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it can be a little touchy at, at times, but he certainly deserves a page. He has, the citations are there, but in the eyes of a few people who were determined to take the page down, um, yeah, it, it got deleted, but that's okay. Like I said, we, we didn't fight it too much. We just said, okay, fine. We'll just wait until we have a few more citations. And, and, but in the meantime, what happened with the, the page? What'd you do with it? Uh, so I have translated it into Russian, of course, <laughs> like, like one would. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's exists on Russian Wikipedia because the Russian Wikipedia has got different, uh, different rules. That's pretty funny. Seth Andrews has this really awesome, amazing Wikipedia page in Russian, but not in English. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But not for long. We're not for long. We 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 collecting uh, more sources, and hopefully, it will be. Up. Right. He has a new book coming out, right? He does. Yeah, second second book. Yeah. So it shouldn't um, be a problem. So yeah, hopefully he's got some some publicity lined up. Yeah. So that that was uh, that was that. Um, what are the consequences <laughs> of joining GSOW oh, is such a hard that, shape. Oh my gosh, you might be forced to interact with the people that you are writing a page for. Usually we don't do this beforehand. We don't get to know them beforehand because we don't want to be influence what you're doing and have a conflict of interest. But when the page is pretty much well written or almost written, we need to approach them to get audio or to get more photos or we let them look it over to make sure that we you know have a kind of right factual error yeah that kind of thing yeah. and we're tough on it we don't we don't let people come in and say oh you can't add that because that is you know not a right wikipedia is um is a funny beast i mean you can say oh we don't want this and that but if it, if it exists out there if information is available if i don't put it in somebody else will come along and that and we'll do exactly it. so you might as well let us put it in there because we're going to do it correctly than having somebody come in and just add whatever so yeah i know it's really tough i have met some amazing people it's <laughs> it's also <laughs> yeah it's so i feel like you know them because when you're writing these pages you, like you said earlier, you you have to pretty much look at everything. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, you don't have to look at everything they've done and all the videos, but you kind of start doing it and you know them really well after yeah. once you're done. And it's super exciting to, you know, you keep hearing their name pop up. Yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 a, it's a blast. Okay. So there's Seth Andrews. Then what? Yep. Yeah. So then, um, after Seth Andrews fiasco, um, uh, I have been actually ap approached by someone, and I thought, well, yeah, after that went so well. <laughs> um, but um, I've been approached to um, write a page for uh, a recovering from religion uh, organization in America. I've met a, a director of this organization, Sarah Morehead, in uh, in America earlier, and she said, oh, please write this page for us we've got this great project coming out the um uh the doubt hotline first ever in, in its kind so yeah i i did it i mean it, that page was like one of the most solid pages i have ever seen it's got amazing sources it, you know you cannot fault it in any way so, yeah i've written it for sarah with, with again with the help of a few other editors um got a great feedback and uh, it's yeah it's been i think it's one of my like babies you know it's i, I love that page it's great 
I, th I think I think it's um, it's a good effort on on GSO W part, and um, it's definitely I'm, I'm very proud of it. We should probably mention that I'm sure there's people listening out there who are probably cringing, saying that we made the page for them and they were involved. And and I need to make sure we add that it's almost impossible at this point to not to write a page without some involvement by somebody around, just at least looking it over and having somebody approach you and saying, hey, could you make a page for this or that? You know, that's fair game. What conflict of interest is, is when that organization writes the page and not a total stranger who, like you said, you hadn't even been aware of it, right? Not really. No, not, not really. I mean, I've, I've heard about it vaguely. But... Right. And then also what they want to avoid with conflict of interest is they don't want people to write a, a page that's all praiseworthy of hide all the criticism and that kind of thing. And yeah. I need to make sure that the listeners to this understand that once that page is live, there's nothing we can do about it. It might be our baby and we feel you know, sentimental towards it, but it's going to get edited by whomever. And if and GSOW totally understands that you have to be able to walk away from the page and let things happen naturally that need to be edited on it. And everybody's clear on that when they're going through training. That's something that that could happen. And it happens all the time. People change things and and so on. You feel still, you know, it's part of you in a way because you know it so well. But I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that people come in and add bits and you know criticism mm -hmm. uh, criticism is always a good section in wikipedia page makes it stronger i think yeah even though i said it's, it's my baby but i actually don't mind i i really once it's written down written and it's out there and it's published i'm quite happy for anybody to come along and do whatever they want right do. i'm not uh, very possessive like that if it, it improves the page well, you know, of if course it ac ac if it improves accuracy and it, it um yeah right and i also don't want to spend my life updating that single page. So I really yeah. do appreciate when I write a page that I, I don't even add it to my watch list most of the time. And I, I leave it and I walk away, maybe check up on it every few months or so. But I don't want to have to add every single new citation that comes out on that page. It's, it's like, okay, I'm done. Somebody else can add it now. <laughs> if it needs to be updated, somebody else work on it. I'm, I'm, I've moved on to somebody else now or something else. And that's fine. Yeah. So next. You went to well. That that page actually came out of the QED, a recent QED. We uh, hanging out with with few of the again Wikipedia editors, and there were great great speakers there uh, from all over the world. And one of the speakers was um, Ryan Bell, who uh, is uh, the guy who decided to leave a year without God to being a pastor for for very very many years. I've I've actually heard him. Speak talk on Seth's podcast um, some time ago. But, um, yeah, he had a uh, he did a really great speech. And during the speech, Brad, uh, my husband turned around to me and said, uh, I don't think Ryan Bell has got a page <laughs> on Wikipedia. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So, of course, he didn't have a page. So, yes, at that point, um, I've decided that that's what I'm going to do. That's going to be my next project. Um, and I've approached Ryan straight after the, uh, the speech and I said, look, like, Wait, whether you like it or not, I'd like to write your page, it's, you know, <laughs> and uh, because I think he definitely deserves uh, deserves a page. Um, I got his contact details, and um, he's actually been thinking about himself. But they, people can't write pages for themselves, mm -hmm. so you know the, he couldn't just write his own page on Wikipedia. So the, the fact that I've approached him was a, was a good good thing. For he him. could have written it, and... but it would have probably been deleted, and it probably would have been yeah. bad. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing, but, you know. Uh, and, Back yeah, off. <laughs> and uh, that's not, yeah, that's not what he's uh, he's known for. He's known for being an activist and humanist, and being great guy who promotes human rights and stuff like that. And so, uh, yeah, I've um, did, did my research, got some um, links, and and we've, again with the help of other editors from uh, GCW, we've written this page and. Um, it's been published uh, last month and has been nominated for Do You Know uh, on Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, that hasn't um, yet come back. I don't know what the results will be. I think it might take a, a while before we know. Mm -hmm. I think the, s the sources are very strong for, for Ryan because his uh, blog went viral and 
CNN got interested. And when you've got coverage in national, you know, websites on national websites like CNN and stuff, then you've got nothing to yeah to worry about. Mm-hmm. It's got coverage in few newspapers and Christian newspapers and secular newspapers, and so it's a fair representation. There's you know people criticizing him, and it, it's it was a good page to to write. And I think there might have been uh, you know there, there might there have been people out there who were uh, writing his page for all I know, but uh, we were the first ones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if somebody wants to do that. Hey, yeah, I'm I'm all for like, it. Go for it. There's so much work to be done. If other yeah, editors yeah. want to do it, that's great. I wish there was a way of communicating with them so we could combine sources so we could yeah, work well, together. I mean, if only there was a project out there where people could talk about editing Wikipedia. <laughs> Mm, ah, I wonder nice. if that exists. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's um, that's been good. I guess when we train GSOW editors, we try to, I don't know, I want to add a little element of humanity to the page. I want it to be something people would find interesting to read and not just, here's this person, he was born on this day, he went to this college, he went to here, he went, and then he did this, and then he did this, and he did that, and end of story. I liked it to include like, who were their influences? who um why did they do this and use their own words you know to some extent i wanted to be human but not like a people's magazine version no gossip or anything like that obviously we can't put that kind of thing in only things that are covered by secondary sources or by what the person actually says themselves if they you know if ryan bell doesn't interview somewhere and he talks about um his struggles with whatever um, we can add that in because it's it's relevant to some extent, you know. So we gotta we have to weigh what is too much, what is you know frivolous trivia compared to what is actually something that should be on the page. And that's kind of the benefit of having other editors looking over your shoulder and saying, "Oh no, that needs to go. Forget that." <laughs> you know, no. Yeah, because sometimes you get so engrossed in a page and you just think, oh, "I'm putting it all." I'm putting this in and this in, and it's all great. And then you just get too carried mm-hmm. away. It's it's great to have a um, second opinion and a third opinion and as many opinions as possible mm-hmm. and people looking over the page over and over again because there's always going to be things people can change and tweak and whatever, you know. Yeah, you're totally 100%. So you're missing a page in there that you've done, Skeptic Society. Yes. Um, so before Ryan, yeah, there was um, a Skeptic Society page for, for Russian Skeptic Society. Now, Russian Skeptic Movement uh, is a very underrepresented in the world, as well as in Russia, I guess. It's very... Yeah, Russia is becoming more and more like North Korea, I think. Uh, but anyways, so it's um, the guy that, that, that runs the society. He is he's very much part of, of the Skeptic Movement. The, the, there was no sort of... Well, there's no information about him other than their web web page and so creating that uh, wikipedia page for skeptic society in russia i think was a great way to get the information out there for them and help them to you know have that online presence um so that's been translated as it's been done in russian initially russian language initially with Svetlana and, and katya which is another trainee and translated into english i think it was translated by mm-hmm. yes and um that was yeah Leon is trying very hard to get all the pages for all skeptic groups pretty much all over Europe and and beyond to have their Wikipedia pages written. I think it's a a massive undertaking, but he's doing a fabulous job um, trying to coordinate it. He wants it written in English as well as written in the native language. And oh my gosh, we could do a podcast just on... (laughs) just on all the pages he's done and all the work he's done. I'm just amazed by what Leon has pulled together. And it's a passion. I don't think he sleeps. Well, yeah, we call him a vampire. He doesn't, we, we're not sure he sleeps. He seems to always be available anytime you ask a question. I know, right. I know, right? And the Russian, the Russian society page isn't a very long page because they, I don't think they've existed more than maybe a year, but he's done quite a bit in that year. Very new, and they just finding their feet. Uh, Kirill Alfyorov. Okay, is the is the founder of this Russian group, and I've met him at TAM. Yeah, he's going again, isn't he? Yes. He's such a lucky guy. He may be doing a paper presentation on Sunday, and he was he had like about ten minutes in one of the workshops I did at TAM last year, and he was talking about homeopathy and how 
prevalent it is in Russia right now. Yeah, gosh, they've got all sorts of war going on in Russia. It's pretty crazy there. Sometimes Kirill posts articles on Facebook, and you just cannot believe your eyes. Some of the stuff that's going on there. Mm-hmm. And, the- that's, and again, that's I feel when I started with the skeptic movement in 2000, I mean, the Internet wasn't even really the Internet. There was no such thing as Facebook. There was no such thing as Wikipedia. I mean, we could email, but I mean, there was some forums and some message boards, but it really didn't exist. And um, I started more or less getting involved in about 2002, a little bit more and a little bit more by attending TAMs and conferences. But I was not aware of any other skeptic groups. I had no idea what they were doing, if they were doing anything. And I was very curious about that. And so once we started the GSOW project and I started getting editors from other countries and other languages, I would ask them, I said, you know, this isn't only about translating things into English or, or vice versa. I want you, once you finish your training and you know how to do this kind of thing, I want you to write pages that are important to that language, you know, about the people, about the, whatever it is. Yes. Stuff that happens there. Yeah. Yeah. Like a local woo masters right yeah we can't just translate (laughs) just james randy's page into as many languages as possible i mean yes he's he's important all over yeah of course but not (laughs) that shouldn't be our our only goal we're we're trying to make it relevant for the people in that language to look at and get great information because they should as well i mean it's not just english i mean we're constantly needing editors even if they're not a hundred percent great skill in their native language as far as a grammar because we can always find a native speaker who can kind of smooth over and look it over who might not even be on the gsow project there's tons of people in the skeptic community who speak languages that would be willing to look it over and just help out and um, once the research is done i mean it's just a matter of fixing some of the grammar and so I wouldn't want anybody to be deterred from joining GSOW because they don't feel that their reading and writing skills are, you know, 100% in that language. Okay. So, Jelena, what what are you planning on working on next? Well, um, I do want to uh, get a page for Sarah Moorhead, who is uh, a director of the Recovering from Lip. Mm-hmm. And now we're telling people, you know, we've learned our lessons, too. Now, when somebody wants to start a brand new page, I'm saying, okay, let me see your sources first. <laughs> Let's see what you're going to use to prove that they're notable enough yeah. to have a Wikipedia page first. No, absolutely. And then if you have the citations and they're all in order and everything's great, then we're like, okay, go yeah. ahead with it. Because otherwise, it's, yeah. yeah, you know, it might be deleted. So we're getting to be a little more. <laughs> but I would have thought Seth Andrews had plenty, you know, when you when you started i would have thought it would have been fine and it would have been probably so did I, yeah. but you know we live and we learn that's true and that's fine and that's the attitude that we're supposed to have we have we see people on wikipedia all the time who don't belong to gsow who are there with an agenda they are going to get and they work on one page and one page only and they never let anybody else edit it and that's that's wrong that's not what wikipedia is all about we're trying to work on multiple pages You've also been doing some things that have nothing to do with, you know, rewriting a page or creating new pages, right? Yeah, no, I've been doing some uh, sort of minor edits at uh, at the beginning. I haven't done that many lately. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I've I've been doing some minor edits for Brian Dalton Page, who who is uh, the Mr. Deity guy. Mm -hmm. Very exciting done some minor edits for uh, Merseyside, Skeptic Society page as well, uh, here in England. Um, yeah, so just sort of things like that. Um, and I've done some uh, uploading of pictures on Wikimedia Commons, mm-hmm. which can be sometimes a very painful process if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I got that down now <laughs> to the science. Let me ask you a couple of really quick questions before we end. You know, because people are listening in and they're they're like, oh, I don't know, should I join this? Should I not join it? Usually what I hear from them is that they're worried about how much time is takes to do these things. Can you talk about time and how long it takes or, you know, how that works? Okay, so it's a very, uh, it depends. I think to, to write a page from scratch, 
takes probably a couple of weeks. But bearing in mind that I have a full-time job mm -hmm. and other things to do on the weekend. So you try to sort of fit it in, in between. I think if, if Leon writes a page, it probably takes him like two hours. <laughs> how, many, how many hours do you think it is? It's a good few hours. I'd say I probably spend a couple of hours every, every you know, couple of days in, 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 that, in those two weeks. So I'd say maybe you know, good eight, ten hours or so. And then um, after you've done like the basics and you've written the text and you, you, you know, you go in and you, you tweak it and you look for maybe some new, more sources and ask for feedback. And that always takes sort of time because once the feedback comes back, you need to change some, some of the stuff and maybe sometimes the layout and you need to look for maybe some more pictures or, you know, stuff like that. So you just sort of tweak it for a bit. Yeah, if all well, then it can be published after a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And you said, you said that, um, you know, as I was saying earlier, you don't have to look at every video the person has yeah. done or every podcast they've done, but there yeah. are going to be, I don't know, it's, to me, it seems like it takes about 40 hours for me to do a page <laughs> from the beginning. And that's yeah. because, you know, you, st you have to read all the citations, all the newspaper articles, you have to look at several podcasts or, um, you know, videos that were done and... <laughs> I, it it can be it it, it really depends because if you get sucked in like you said you, you'll end up just watching and reading forever mm -hmm. and that can just go go on on and on and on mm -hmm. for hours. Um, but I guess more research you do, better the page will be. So mm -hmm. it's always good to. And um, some of the pages that I've written, the uh, the information was more readily and easily available than others. Sometimes you you just have to Google something and you know hundred sources will pop up. But sometimes it's a bit more, you know, you need a bit more research than that. Right. Some of the people who are newer to the to the skeptic movement are probably easier to write pages for because everything's online. Yeah. Whereas somebody who's started thirty or forty years ago, you know, that's a little more difficult because you're you're looking at newspaper clippings and those are harder to find, especially if you're in the UK or <laughs> it's not as simple. It's not as simple whenever they're no, farther no, away. It's, it's... So it's why we have we have a lot of different sources. Uh, CFI has been a big supporter of ours and they have uh, cabinets full of newspaper articles and they have Tim um, and Barry out there are more than happy to look through their cabinets of information and scan a newspaper clippings for us so that we will have something to um, to cite. It doesn't have to be online. I mean, it just has to be a citation from, you know, Omaha, Nebraska's local newspaper back there written in 1982 or something. <laughs> it might not be fine. You might not be able to find that online, but as long as we have the citation and we are able to, somebody else could look it up. It's, it's fair game. Yeah. Yeah. So Seth Andrews, Ryan Bell, those are all really recent, recent people to the, to the movement. So they're relatively, they're easy to find those pages. So I really appreciate you staying up late so that we can, um, so we can have this California and this UK interview only by the magic of the internet are we able to do these kinds of things i think i think that the gsow project is only something that could be done now with the technology we have now 10 years ago i don't think we could have done something like this it would have been a struggle sending emails back to each other or write letters by hand <laughs> oh oh my goodness that would be something else so yeah it's such a joy to be able to take advantage of all the technology it's amazing and it's free yeah. technology even better. No, it's awesome. Extra plus. Yeah, the Google, the Google Hangout that we use um, to chat sometimes with the guys from the team, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So anything else that you think that we should have add into this interview before you leave? Mm. No, I think that's You're going to think of something, you know that. <laughs> no, well, it's, then it's, it's gone then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can't really think of anything that, uh, right now, to be honest. That's, uh, I think that's Okay. All right. So. Yeah, it's been it's been uh, uh, a, a great experience. It still is um, to be part of of GCW team, um, and I've made great friends and um, had great experiences. And of course, I've been introduced to whole uh, conference world that that you know they absolutely love, uh, and all this science. -y yeah, I became somewhat of a geek, really, a uh, science geek, which I've never thought of myself that 
that I'm, I'm going to be like that before. Uh, <laughs> but science is awesome. It's 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 much better than anything like that. Can, for example, religion can offer because it's about the way the real world works. It's, it's really amazing. But um, yeah, it's uh, been an incredible experience. Great, grateful to Skeptics Guides of the Universe that they've featured your uh, interview and that I've listened and then I've joined and now it's just the rest is history. It's and life has changed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, actually. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jelena. It was just a joy talking to you. I met you at QED and you and your husband are just wonderful people. I'm so happy to have you a part of our team and your husband's such a wonderful support. <laughs> I'm, you know, he's, he's become a little bit of a Wikipedia widow, I suppose. Uh, we should probably have shirts for all of our significant others, <laughs> Wikipedia widows uh, <laughs> to some extent. Yeah. It's been so great talking to you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Yeah, my pleasure, Susan. It's it's a great honor to be part of this project, and uh, it's a very fulfilling thing, and to be to be part of the community and to make a, a difference, however small it is, um, in spreading good information about good people. So yeah, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Bye now. Bye bye. <laughs>